Good morning, distinguished um, participants of forum. My greetings to you. Uh, let me introduce my presentation dedicated to the cytology diagnosis of um, thyroid neoplasms. First of all, let me tell you about the method um, efficacy, and I will mention some figures uh, that are of interest and describe the opportunities and problems of cytology method. Uh, the study of uh, nodes of thyroid is done uh, with a biopsy, with um, ultrasound control, and later the cytology study. That's a routine method, uh, very popular, and uh, it's uh, used to study the patients with this pathology cytology method is the only morphology method um, to research uh, the nodes before the surgery. Uh, hence, uh, the role of cytology conclusion is of vital importance for uh, decision making on the future treatment, whether to follow up or to uh, treat, wait and see or treat. Uh, what are the opportunities of cytology method at present? Um, we study uh, the nodes uh, with the cytology and the cytologist. First of all, in bigger volume, uh, is uh, checking uh, hyperplasias uh, that uh, make some 60, 70 percent of all the cases they are benign and uh, malignant. Um, um, Tumors uh, are only about 5% of all the uh, functions. Um, the sensitivity of cytology method in recognition of uh, most frequent primary malignant tumors, um, I mean the uh, classical papilla um, and nodular cancers, is around 95%. That's the level of sensitivity. As for the specificity, the correctness of um, uh, cytology description, it's about 90 percent, and the risk of uh, erroneous hyperdiagnostics is about 3 percent. However, uh, this diagnosis has a gray zone. It's a problem uh, that is follicular structure with different mag malignal, uh, malignant potential these kinds of monoplasms. What factors do determine uh, the efficacy and may improve the result of cytology study? Well, uh, we, uh, we start uh, the work. Uh, the cytologists should always be informed about the clinical status of the uh, patient uh, and, if possible, informed about the findings uh, of the ultrasound. Next uh, thing to do. Um, they uh, do only the ultrasound uh, uh, controlled uh, biopsy, FNA, and uh, um, it's best if it's uh, made in real time mode on site. The cytologist um, is quickly checking uh, the aspiration material uh, that was just received, um, and if material is non informative, uh, there's a chance to repeat uh, the test, hence, the result shall get improved. Um, and uh, to improve the quality, uh, well, you can improve the quality of information by 68% um, of um, importance is uh, following the technology, um, uh, correct uh, uh, preparation and um, dyeing of um, uh, the samples. Take a look at the samples. They're already fixed and dyed to the left. Uh, there are the correct things done. Cytology material applied um, is distributed uh, with a thin layer, like in hematology, uh, all over the surface of uh, the glass. To the right, uh, there's an erroneous uh, work um, um, aspirator is just placed on the uh, glass without um, the distribution. It looks like a spot of blood elements that are always present in the aspirate are covering the epithelium, which is at the bottom. In such a case, the cytologist may uh, not see the informative um, um, epithelial cells. As for the dyeing, let me add, uh, the um, 
um, dyeing is done uh, two ways. In Russia, uh, they use Leishman or Romanovsky uh, method, uh, and uh, uh, there's also uh, the most popular method in the West. Uh, this is the Papa Nikolaou method. Uh, these two methods of uh, dyeing are common all over the world, and each method has its uh, pros, and uh, they may add up to each other. Uh, besides the classical uh, method of cytology, um, nowadays in cytology some additional liquid cytology may be used, um, and if necessary we can prepare the cytoblocks. Um, this technology is rather rare, but it enables uh, to enrich the liquid material with a small number of cells. Sometimes it's difficult to assess it uh, due to the fact that there's not enough cells in epithelium. Cytology material may be um, added up with new uh, technologies that specify the diagnosis, that is immune cytochemical uh, uh, tests, um, the flow cytometry, or molecular genetic studies. All that, of course, uh, requires additional expenditures, and it can't be uh, used uh, frequently. However, this is recommended by the International Cytology Academy. Now, let's talk about morphology. Uh, cytology uh, tests are um, kind of limited uh, regarding their opportunities, and they can't completely copy the histology conclusion. However, cytologists should be well informed and uh, know uh, the histology classification. The latest uh, was adopted by WHO in the year 17, and it's a big list of tumor uh, processes. I will not specify it now, but this classification includes adenomas and um, unclear uh, malignant potential uh, cases as well as um, numerous um, uh, tumor malignant processes that I will not describe now. Just let me mention that um, an important element of new classification was um, uh, allocation of encapsulated non-invasive tumor uh, with um, uh, the uh, centers of papilla type. Um, it uh, may be benign, uh, so it was excluded uh, from the papillary cancer groups, and uh, it was considered to be an interim process with non-clear malignant potential. This is the thing to remember and to consider when working. Uh, cytology method has limitations regarding the recognition of certain tumor processes, that's of importance, and uh, it's unlucky for us. Uh, thus, in the year 07, in the United States, uh, Bethesda National uh, Cancer Institute, uh, the a group of experts, uh, endocrinologists, cytologists, have developed a system of um, uh, cytology conclusions uh, that consider the limitations of this kind of um, uh, testing and diagnosis. Several years later, in the year 17, it was updated uh, considering the modern uh, histology classification data. What is that? Cytology system of Bethesda. It's a multi-level system of cytology conclusions. Cytology uh, tests are, are subdivided into six categories. Each category is described by the cytologist. It has a certain risk of malignization, and in each is determined uh, the um, mode of diagnosis and treatment uh, measures. That's uh, the Bethesda classification system, latest uh, of the year 17. To the left, uh, you can see the cytology um, 
conclusions, uh, non-informative material, uh, benign uh, note, unclear, atypical, follicular uh, tumor, suspicion of a malignant uh, tumor, and malignant um, neoplasm. Uh, to the, that's to the left, and to the uh, right, there's the percentage of a possible malignancy, um, though it's called benign sometimes. Uh, let's uh, see these categories in uh, more detail. First, non-informative material. That means that the cytologist, um, uh, when studying this mer, cannot make a diagnosis because the material is not adequate. Um, if it's adequate, uh, it has to contain a certain number of follicular cells of um, uh, thyroid epithelium, no less than 60 per one um, Piece. That's follicular epithelium, excluding other cells like macrophages, leukocytes, and other components of um, cytology aspirate. There are certain exclusions. If we see material with very little cells, however, they look atypical. If there are only four cells or five cells in one group, um, uh, we cannot uh, consider this material non-informative. Um, we call it um, either unclear or suspicious. Uh, well, the second exclusion option is uh, when we study this solid node with inflammation. Uh, these uh, may be tereoidite, uh, abscesses, uh, different um, kinds of granulomas, uh, uh, which are uh, rare. But at aspiration, they uh, usually contain either very little epithelium or none. Um, the, the material, this kind of material is not, however, considered non-informative. It's called a, a benign inflammatory process. Next are colloid nodes. It's a frequent situation when we uh, see colloid-filled node, but there's very little uh, cells in the material, so we never count uh, the epithelial uh, cells in this case. Uh, the reasons for low informative material in cytology smears, they may be double. First, the technological reason uh, when the smear wasn't prepared correctly, or it, uh, the reason may be the node itself. For example, if it has necrosis, fibrosis, if it's very dense, and thus it's impossible or difficult to uh, get epithelial cells or cysts. Uh, have a very low concentration of uh, cells. Uh, that uh, the material is not informative. In case inf material is not informative, uh, most of the nodes uh, should be uh, punctured uh, once again. Uh, in most cases, they turn out to not be malignant. Uh, uh, only 5 to 7% are malignant. Uh, however, the secondary puncture is necessary. And it's recommended to do this test on site. Um, if it's not done, then there's again a um, recommendation that the secondary aspirate, the material, uh, should be presented on no less than three preparations um, puncture, biopsy, uh, FNA, uh, enables to improve uh, the quality of cell material up to 80%. Per uh, if uh, uh, there's low informative material, you can prepare cell blocks. This method is widely used nowadays in the labs, um, not only for thyroid, but um, for other liquid material from different uh, places. Um, and it provides very good um, results for diagnosis. Second category, that's uh, benign non-tumor processes. Um, uh, they make around 70% of cytology material. Uh, there's a very low risk of malignization, and such patients uh, are usually just followed up, wait and see. Benign processes that we study most frequently are follicular benign uh, nodes. Uh, it's uh, just a pteriditers or goiter, um, sometimes other uh, benign, um, most frequently inflammatory processes. Now regarding uh, the uh, benign nodular uh, follicular node, it, it may contain colloid, 
a low um, amount of epithelium, a lot of colloid, or it may be an uh, adenoma uh, goiter with expressed proliferation of follicular cells. To the left, you see the classical uh, picture of a colloid goiter that covers all the glass uh, that's um, uh, besides uh, the layers of follicular cells, you'll see macrophags. Uh, one more picture. To the left, uh, there's a uh, uh, benign hyperplasty, a uh, node that has uh, both uh, follicular and uh, bigger goiter cells. They're typical in case of benign uh, nodes. While to the right, uh, you can see expressed uh, um, um, epithelium proliferation with no uh, colloid. It's um, a more typical form adenoma and it's difficult to interpret. Uh, next benign process, that's um, lymphocyte thyroiditis. It has a lot of uh, hyperplasia, lymphoid cells. And epithelium, to the right, you see it, uh, follicular cells, and at the bottom there are oncocyte uh, uh, epithelium uh, cells, they're called Gunkle cells. Uh, the nodes of uh, category 2 are usually uh, not liable for surgery, and uh, the uh, risk of um, uh, false and negative conclusions is up to 3%. And uh, next is a typical on clear. Uh, this is material unclear for cytologists uh, due to small number of atypical uh, cells and structures um, uh, that um, can't be uh, referred to malignant. Uh, however, they're difficult uh, for classification. Uh, they are to be specified. Um, in this case, uh, one has to repeat uh, the uh, test uh, or uh, sometimes uh, to do uh, molecular genetic studies, uh, but they are done seldom because it's difficult and expensive. Uh, I'd like to underline uh, that uh, the third category, unclear, is most frequently a benign process, and malignancy risk in this category is from 6 to 18 percent. Next category, number four. Uh, that's our pain, the gray zone follicular uh, tumor. And it includes the processes uh, with a single morphology pattern. Uh, that's uh, hyperplasia, goiter, follicular adenoma, cancer, follicular option of papillar cancer, and follicular encapsulated uh, tumor with uh, uh, papillar uh, structure um, centers. Uh, next is a follicular highly differentiated um, um, cancer with monomorphic uh, single cells of follicular structure. And here on one slide, you can see different uh, uh, forms of uh, nosology. To the left, hyperplasty uh, goit in the center on top, follicular adenoma. To the right, highly differentiated tumor of um, unclear uh, malignant potential. At the bottom, follicular cancer and follicular option of uh, papillary cancer. Most of the patients of uh, category four do undergo surgery. The malignization risk is from 25 to 40 uh, percent. I'm running short of time. Uh, here is another tumor that's category four. Uh, that's uh, uh, from the point of cytology, uh, this tumor can't be identified and differentiated, whether it's benign or malignant. We simply tell that we see the onca uh, uh, cyta, uh, tumor. To the left, there's adenoma uh, with more expressed atypical cells, while to the right, there's follicular uh, cancer consisting of oncocyte uh, cells. Next is suspicion of cancer, category 
six, we see atypical cells, but there's not enough of them uh, for um, diagnosis. Category six is definitely cancer. Before it was number five category. That's the most frequent papilla uh, cancer, classical. Uh, Cytology-wise, it has massive papilla structures and layers with cells with inter nucleus inclusions. Next is follicular. Uh, option of papilla uh, cancer follicles filled with colloid to the right. Uh, there's non-invasive follicular uh, tumor. Next, uh, you see uh, papilla cancer consisting of oncocytes. Uh, uh, big ones, however, they uh, form follicular cancer structures. That's of an interest. It's a malignant, uh, it's aggressive papilla uh, cancer made of um, uh, tall cells. That's papilla cancer uh, made of um, uh, pillar uh, cells. They differ from, uh, uh, that's medulla. Um, um, cancer. It's formed of a thyroid epithelium uh, cells. It uh, may have different um, cytology uh, signs. The cells may be of different structure. To the right, uh, you can see typical nucleus that look uh, like salt and pepper. To specify the diagnosis, we may use um, a rather a frequent uh, method uh, used by cytologists. That is a calcitonin uh, reaction. To the right, you see it. Also, there are other kinds of um, cancer. Uh, they are much more rare. That's the low differentiation cancer. It's very rare. However, it's aggressive. And that's anaplasia uh, cancer. It's formed by the cells. You can see to the right, they're round. And they uh, look like big epithelium uh, cells. Like to the left, you can see elongated. Uh, sarcoma-like cells. Uh, that's a brief exp uh, explanation of a cytology of different uh, tumors. Now it's time uh, for me to round up since I'm running short of time. Thanks a lot for your attention.